Hey everybody, how you doing? I am just trying to catch up with everybody here. I've had a lot of messages um, asking me, hey, are you okay? What happened in court? Um, what's going on? So I've been busy. I, You know, people always say, I'm busy, I'm busy. And you're thinking like, what the, what are you so busy doing? Why can't you let us know? You know, I understand. Um, so I just thought I'd explain to everybody what, uh, what I've been doing, just trying to keep up. Um, and I, I get off track so much. There's so information. So yes, there's so much information that I research. There's so many different things that I listen to. So many decisions that I'm having to make recently that I can't keep all of it straight. Sometimes I just have to make some notes. So uh, this is why I've been so busy. I should wrote a couple notes here. Um, you know, I went to court on January 6th and I did do, I did do, um, an update on my court stuff with Jason Goodman, uh, on crowdsource the truth. So all that information is on crowdsource the truth. He was there in court with me, he flew out from New York, uh, right after from DC, from Jerome Corsi's court case, hopped on a plane, flew out here, uh, went, literally went to court with me, um, uh, hung out, we went to, uh, went to get some food. Uh, did some filming here within the uh, hats around the world hats around the world uh, room bunch of stuff so we were busy doing that uh, thanks Jason again for coming out here um, so but yeah uh, things I have to do before I make YouTube videos uh, I run my eBay business so that's finding, purchasing, organizing, refurbishing, photographing, researching, listing, organizing by category, finding the item when it sells, packing the item and printing the label, dropping the item off at the post office. Um, uh, this is all while I'm being electronically harassed and getting uh, stalked on my way to drop off the item. So like when I say electronically harassed, there will be customers that are clearly um, just harassers. They're not interested in uh, the item in the store they have like a specific name that'll kind of tell me they're um, a perp you know and I have to deal with those those people uh, asking for returns saying they got an item that I never shipped so you know stuff like that um, harassing me in that way so dealing with that a lot and uh, uh, also just you know keeping track of all of my purchases all of my receipts keeping all the tax stuff in order, you know, hiring a tax person, going through all of that. If you've ever done ta had a business and done taxes, like downloading all of the documents, uh, recording all the receipts, showing what's what, uh, itemizing what percentage of the house I use for my business so I can write that off. And by the time I've done all that, it's taken me like three weeks to calculate all that stuff and get all that stuff done. So I've wasted three weeks trying to get back a small amount of money or just not even get back but not have to pay a small amount of money I don't even know if it works out um, but that takes forever um, so there's a lot to go with this business and I have to keep up with it I have to I have to get this done first if I don't get this stuff shipped out I have percentages that go down that show that I shipped out this stuff late and then eventually my store gets shut down I have no more revenue to function in life I don't have a business anymore you know so I, ha I have to do that I'm, you know I don't have an option well I do have an option I could just not be um, an independent person and not try to run my own business and just go and just give up and ask for some kind of public assistance. But I've never done that. Well, when I say I never done that, I got WIC when I worked for the fire department. I was take take care of it. Anyway, long story, five kids in the house. I was the only person bringing money in. We got WIC. So we got some like some cheese and some milk and like some oatmeal and stuff like that to feed the kids. While I was working for the fire department, I qualified for that. Uh, that who knows that's anyway I'm kind of going off track here um, I'm the head of the household here I'm a single parent uh, my kids are 22 and 16 so my son's an adult uh, he works full-time he pays rent here he pays for food um, and my son goes no, my daughter goes to school still uh, my first priority is with my kids um, if I have the opportunity to spend time with my kids at a softball game or watching a movie 
uh, that takes first priority. Uh, that's the time you never get back. If I don't stop what I'm doing to spend time with my kids, to go to drive my daughter to the batting cage, to hang out with my son in the backyard, um, and play some frisbee game or something, you know, just to spend time with your kids, you know. I didn't, yeah, I won't go, in, go in, in long stories, but that's important. You don't get that time back. You never know, you know, so you take the time while you can to do some of that stuff and you put some other things to the side. Um, you know, I'm constantly watching YouTube videos uh, to find new information to help me with my case and to help targeted individuals with their fight against this because this is a real thing. We know who's running this. We know how it's funded. Um, we just need the proof in court and certain documents released, certain FISA documents, stuff like that. And eventually we'll, this will be proven. But, you know, I'm still researching all of the time to try to figure out how to make that happen. Uh, networking with people the best I can. And that's part of this video response, too, is um, a lot of people want me to return their messages, respond to their comments, return their calls. Um, I, ha I have to do like what's uh, triage. If anybody's ever worked in the medical field, there's triage. You, you just basically have certain color tags. You put different color tags on the people that need help the most. Um, so that's kind of how I look at things in my life. There are certain things that need to be handled first and right now interacting and having like a social life on social media and just contacting everyone or responding to everyone with a question that would take hours and hours and hours and hours and every day every single day and now so i don't do the youtube thing full time i have my full-time job um all of my research time to you know i, li I live in a hoa yeah i think i put that on here <laughs> Uh, I live in a neighborhood that has uh, a homeowners association. That's pretty much standard here in Arizona, I guess. Everybody's got a homeowners association. It's not like, you know, in California, uh, my mom had a house that she rented out. The homeowners association was like 350 bucks a month, 400 bucks a month. And that went into the rent or something like that. But uh, here it's 25 to 50 bucks, I think, something like that. Um, and everybody pays it. But long story short, uh, I have to, you know, if the weeds start getting a little bit long out there, you know, I don't really have the option to just go, ah, I'll pull those later. You know, they'll, they'll give me a ticket. So I've got to do that. Spent half the day pulling weeds yesterday. Thankfully, the kids helped me. Uh, I'm going to do more of that today. So there's like things that happen in le like my normal everyday life. This is, shouldn't be part of my normal everyday life. Just... I should not even be on this video talking to all of you about this. I should be doing like a video on, uh, you know, professional photography or skateboarding or uh, something else that it, that I enjoy. I really don't. Well, I enjoy talking to the people, you know, but um, so don't get me wrong. The, this is not the topic that I want to sp spend all of my time on. I want to spend my time on something positive. I want this to end. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about this. Uh, all right, so you guys get it. I've been busy. There's things that need to be taken care of. I went to court on January 6th, and uh, I took this letter in with me. It's actually a little bit shorter letter than the last one I took in. And uh, basically, uh, for anybody new to my channel, I upset the local police by uploading some videos about them gang stalking me, organized stalking and harassment. And it wasn't just the Avondale Police Department, there was other departments involved. There's a lot of people around here involved. And I also don't know if it's every single person in every department. I think there are certain people within these departments that take part in this and then it makes the entire organization look bad. I don't know, I might be wrong. Um, I hope I'm right on that because uh, I'd hate to think that everybody in like you know City Hall would be complicit with uh, being involved in organized stalking harassment that 
you know, it violates a lot of different codes, the Constitution. Uh, so, after uploading those videos, I was arrested on January 4th uh, for aggravated assault. And I've got video of this other guy pulling the gun out of his window. It's a long story. There's a lot of videos that go along with it. Uh, but my most recent court date, I asked for more time to hire another attorney. Uh, they had given me a public defender after I fired Mark Victor. The attorney had given basically all the, the rest of my money that I had to. I thought this guy would, you know, I've watched his videos. I thought, my gosh, this guy is awesome in, in uh, trial. He said he would take me all the way through trial with the amount of money I gave him and then wouldn't, when I wouldn't sign the plea deal, and then said, look at the contract, it's in there. And I'm, of course, it's on like page you know, 900 and whatever, or, you know, actually probably page 10. But, um, so I ended up getting a, I fired him because Here's here's the reason, if you haven't been following my videos. He never told me what a motion discovery was. He never told me what exculpatory evidence meant and that I had the right to get all of the evidence from this case. Um, there were 11 police officers that responded to this call this, and that none of them have any body camera footage to a response for a firearm. So there's 11 vehicles with vehicle mounted cameras. There's 11 officers with body cameras. Um, there was a statement in the police discovery saying that the police officer's body camera malfunctioned, yet there is audio of them reading my rights to me. So did they take that on a body camera or did they take that with just audio? How did they do that? Where are the body camera um, videos? So my attorney never went through any of this with me. I had to approach him to tell him that I wanted to do a motion discovery. I had to tell him that I wanted to uh, file a motion to compel when th they would not give these videos to me. Somebody has to get it, whether it's the, pro the prosecuting attorney uh, was given those and they're withholding them, but I don't think that's the case. I think the prosecuting attorney hasn't been given those videos because the Avondale Police Department is withholding them. Where are they? Who shows up to a call with 11 police officers and doesn't record any body camera footage? Where is that footage? And why won't they give it to me? And I want all of it because it'll take all of it to prove this and they don't want me to do that. So here's the letter that I read to the, uh, the judge and I asked for this to go on permanent record. I uh, actually got ahead of myself. I, I've learned the process and I asked for this to be put on permanent record and the judge goes, yeah, that was actually the next thing I was going to ask you. And I said, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I didn't mean to jump ahead of you. And he's like, well, it's okay. Uh, he seems like a cool guy. Not just a cool guy, like he seems like a reasonable guy. I don't know. He, uh, I don't know. It seems like he's starting starting to listen a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. I hope so. So um, I've, I've had to write him another letter. Uh, that I'm, I have to uh, get to him either via attorney, like public, the public defender that I, <laughs> yeah, uh, Milo Iniguez. I won't be working with him anymore. He, he told me that it wasn't his job to do anything really other than go have take this plea deal. Go help me take the plea deal and just sign. And he was irritated that I wanted to get this exculpatory evidence. And, no, it was Jason was uh, razzing him in the not razzing him. He was just asking him some questions like, "Hey, man, don't you care about the Constitution? What do you mean it's not your job to to demand to get this exculpatory evidence? Do you, do you not care about the Constitution at all?" And th that guy just was waiting to get out of it. Actually, I recorded that. I, I turned my camera on. I forgot I recorded that. It was awesome. Um. So that's where we're at. We're, um, I'm waiting for this exculpatory evidence. And I'd signed a plea deal before I knew that I had any of this. All of this information came to me. Some of the information I got before I signed the plea deal, but I didn't believe that I had enough of the information to go forward and prove my innocence and prove this, the rest of this. Um, what I've been asking to be put on the permanent record in this case all the information about gang stalking, organized stalking, harassment, um, all of that. 
All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and read this letter. This is what I this is what I wrote to the judge. This is on permanent record in my case. So it'll be public uh, public record soon enough. So you'll be able to go into the case files and uh, read all these documents. But I'm going to go ahead and give it to you right now. Okay. So this was January sixth. This is what I uh, gave to the judge. Actually, I had to give it to the public defender, which I never signed a contract for him to represent me. I never met the guy in person. Couldn't even prove if, if it was him or not. So, uh, I mean, I'm, it was, but I'm just saying, like, think about the whole the whole process. It's really, I never asked for that guy to represent me. I didn't want him to speak for me in court. I wanted to speak for myself. Uh, so this is the letter I gave him. I am requesting to the Honorable Court that the plea deal pertaining to this case be rejected or dropped. Oh, wait. Wait, no, that's not it. That's not the one, because I didn't ask for it to be rejected or dropped. Oh, damn. I grabbed the wrong, I grabbed the wrong letter. Postpone the later date. There we go. That's it. Okay. Here's another part of this whole thing. I almost said hundreds of hours. I think I'm in thousands of hours of research into this case, this whole... This whole thing. These are letter. Well, where to go? These are letters that I've written to the court, uh, multiple pages, trying to explain this thing. There's no short way to do it. All right. So now that I've got the right one, this is the one I just read to the court, and this is a uh, bigger font and a little shorter. So, all right. I am requesting to the honorable court that the plea deal pertaining to this case be postponed until a later date. I have contacted an attorney that I will be able to retain who will provide me with proper legal advice on how I should move forward in this manner. In this matter. I signed the current plea deal, not because it was the right thing to do, but because I am under duress and I have, uh, and I felt I had no other choice. My previous attorney, Mark J. Victor, withheld crucial information regarding my case that clouded my judgment in this decision. He never explained to me what emotion discovery was. He lied to me about how his firm would represent me and refused to demand exculpatory evidence, among other things. Um, I am in the process of filing a formal complaint with the Arizona State Bar against Mr. Victor. Rule 15.1, Section B-8 of the Arizona Rules of Criminal Procedure, Supplemental Disclosure states that B, except as rule providing in 39B, the state must make available to the defendant the following material and information with the state's possession or control. Uh, 8. All existing material or information that tends to mitigate or negate the defendant's guilt or would uh, tend, to, tend to reduce the defendant's punishment. 11 officers are noted in the poem. So that, that's the statement from the actual Arizona state rules that I found. Uh, you know, you have to quote these things in court. This state rule right here, the state law, says that they're supposed to give that to me. I was not. My attorney did not tell me that. And when I told him that I demanded these videos, he kept saying, what, what are they going to do for you? What are they going to do for you? What are you going to get out of these videos? And I kept saying, I can show if I, okay, I can get the video from the gas station. I can get these police officers' videos. I can put them together and show that these people were stalking me and set me up. They do not want me to have these videos. They know I have the capability. I've got the I've got the history with the video, putting these things together. You know, did it for the Air Force for ten years. I can look through video. I was I was went to a class of people to uh, with Chuck DeCaro that researched videos of IEDs blowing up in Iraq and Afghanistan, and found the details in those videos to put together some some very good information for them. And Chuck DeCaro specifically told our class, which was Army uh, Army Reserves, they were right down the street from the Air Force Base, the 144th Fighter Wing, right there on Clovis Avenue, they got a helicopter right there, it was right there. Army and Air National Guard, and he said, you guys figured this out faster than the group of CIA did, so. Um, I can I can use this video and I can show what these people did. They don't want to give it to me. Okay. Eleven officers are noted in the police discovery. There is one body camera video of the police searching my bail boxes for some reason. Uh, there was an audio. 
Uh, there was an audio recording of my Miranda rights being read to me by Officer Miranda. I have some typos in here that I didn't realize I had. Hmm. Thought I corrected that. Um, how do they have specific footage and nothing else? The body camera videos being withheld from this case are exculpatory evidence that were not released to my attorney when requested. When they were not released, I requested that Mark Victor demand the exculpatory evidence. He refused and said that's all they gave us. Mark Victor refused to file a motion to compel, which shows that he did not zealously defend me as the Arizona bar states he must. He misguided me into signing this current plea deal by withholding crucial information needed to properly defend myself. I would have never moved forward if my attorney had properly acted upon my requests. I felt I had no other option. I felt I had no other option. There's no... What else am I supposed to do? I go pay this guy all this money. I have been watching TV shows my whole life and movies where, you know, you get in a, a jam, you need somebody to stand up for you, and you have to sell whatever, you have to pay an attorney for them to properly for what's the, properly defend you, to zealously defend you, and then as soon as you give them their money, your money, it's all over. They don't care. I'm not saying every attorney, but this one in particular. Um, you know, I was out of money, felt I had no other option, and just, okay, whatever, I guess this system is too powerful me for too powerful for me to put the truth out there, to tell them exactly what's going on, and for somebody to actually take this information and investigate it. And so far, the only people that I see investigating this thing is uh, QAnon. I see the, which is military intelligence that is disseminating information um, through different channels. So that has yet to be proven. I believe that it's a thing. I believe QAnon is is real and these people are investigating this um, but I don't know how long it's going to take in order for that them to prove this and to uh, be able to that they have to release this information at the right timing um, because if they release it at the wrong time it's going to look like some political move and it's going to be hard for people to believe that this has been happening to so many people this organized stalking harassment I hope my mic is picking this up good. Uh, I'm sorry if it's not. Uh, I didn't get all set up here with my lights and everything. I just wanted to do this. I, I still got weeds to pull. <laughs> right out the window right there. Uh, items to ship. I think there's 50 more to go today. Something like that. You know, I'm, I'm tired. To, I don't have a weekend, really. Uh... Okay, uh, here we go. In addition, the day before I was to appear in court to make this decision, a couple of very strange events took place. My daughter's school was put on lockdown for hours due to a claim of seven students with handguns. She called me while she was hiding in the back of a dark classroom to let me know she was okay. The moment I returned home from this event at the school, I received a phone call from Mr. Victor. He informed me that David George Swigert had just contacted him to notify me that I have been called as a witness in a federal case. Mark Victor berated me and told me to stop talking about him and his firm. Nothing about the court appearance the next day. This intentional interference with an officer of the court by Swigert and the trauma I went through that day of not knowing if I would ever see my daughter again also clouded my judgment when signing this plea deal. You know, yeah, and then, uh, should I even mention this? I didn't, get, I didn't get much sleep last night. A certain person wanted to pick at me and start an argument with me after all of that, after I went through all that, the thing at the school, uh, this thing getting called by my attorney, a certain somebody wanted to argue with me until 3 o'clock in the morning. So I was just completely mentally and physically drained the next day. It's hard to make a proper decision when you are, uh, when you've gone through an entire day of just nonsense so all of those events events were very coincidental imagine that i'm requesting two months to work with my uh, uh, i'm requesting two months to work with my new attorney and return to court with my decision to accept a plea deal or not i tried working with mr Iniguez, but he said he was not interested in my case i cannot be represented by anyone not interested in my case he literally said that 
I asked him, hey, I'm, if I want to retain you, how much is, does it cost to retain you for my attorney? He uh, said, I'm not interested in doing that. It would be a this or that. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, it'd be a slippery slope, conflict of interest, something like that. I would never in a million years retain that guy. I just wanted to see what his uh, retainer fee was. So he figured that out, didn't want to tell me. Um, but this guy wanted to spend zero time with me. Uh, he's got the elite complex talk down to me. I recorded both of the phone calls. Arizona is a one party consent uh, state for phone calls. And I've learned that after Mr. this thing with Mr. Victor, that I should have recorded that phone call from the beginning. So, you know, I just record all of them now because when these people lie to your face and they try to use it in court and say, I never said that, then all you have to do is hit play and then they've lost their credibility in court. And they, unfortunately, that seems to be the only way to protect yourself in this whole situation. Um, you know, and then you're like constantly recording all these different situations and then people, you know, the people that don't know that haven't been through this and aren't part of this, they're thinking, why are you recording my conversation? So, but uh, usually the people that have an issue with it, they call, they're from some kind of company or whatever that says, uh, we're recording this conversation for our records. I'll say, yeah, yeah me, me too. I'm recording this conversation for posterity. And they go, well, you can't record us. I say, mm, yeah, I can. I'm telling you I am. I don't even have to tell you I am. I'm just telling you I am. And sometimes they'll just hang up. So, you know, it's okay for us to record, but not for you. So, all right. So, I let everybody know what's going on with my court case in the middle of all that. Uh, I've got two months. The judge uh, granted my request. I've got two months. I've been working on these letters. I've been working on the procedures uh, that I need to go through, the channels I need to go through to submit all this information, um, to submit things pro se, not necessarily represent myself pro se, but to submit uh, documents pro se, different things, and uh, carry through this thing. So, wow, I completely just lost my train of thought there. Man, that is tough. So, uh, let's see. What else do I need to talk about? I need to get back to work. I'm sorry, this is kind of a choppy video. God, most of my videos are like that. I'm, you know, I'm not a professional with this. When I was in multimedia in the Air Force, I wasn't always the guy, you know, I did a small amount of training. I wasn't always the guy in front of this microphone. I'm speaking, I was the camera guy, I was doing graphics, I was doing billboards for uh, the freeway, uh, for recruiting, stuff like that, uh, websites, um, documenting, I te there was a lot of fun stuff, you know, a lot of TDY, a lot of deployments, filming jets, filming uh, fires, all kinds of different stuff, you know, putting out fires, that's what this actually, this picture is right here, that's me and my old fire truck right there, it's a crash truck, it's a P-29, Crash Fire Rescue Truck, Google it. They're the old tri uh, truck. They use this one called a Striker now. Uh, not everybody has a Striker, but... Well, that's a whole different tangent. That's a whole other video. Maybe I'll do... You know, I've got some interesting stories. I've been thinking about doing uh, story time. Just talk about some of the interesting things that I've gone through. Not, not, not always gone through, but just some of the interesting things that I've experienced. Um, that uh, that sometimes, you know, that thankfully this stuff is, uh, you can research this stuff. So whatever I say, you can Google it. There's articles, different stuff like that about some of the stories, you know. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Meeting the firefighters from 9-11, uh, going on skate trips with pro skaters and getting write-ups in uh, magazines like Slap Magazine and uh, uh, meeting President Carter on an airplane, Warren Sapp, meeting Marco Rubio, him getting a little irritated with me, uh, you know, senators, congressmen, uh, presidents, yeah, Bush, Obama, both showed up to uh, the 144th fighter wing, got to check out Air Force One, uh, a lot of, lot of different stories. Photographed Kiss, went backstage with Kiss. Um, goes on and on and on and on. I'll write down some notes and I'll start doing some story time. 
tell some of those uh, in case these guys get me, you know, not being paranoid, but I just did an interview with uh, somebody that worked directly for Bill and Hillary Clinton. He used to do some dirty work for him, and he uh, he helped explain part of how they target a person and uh, backed up some of what I was talking about. So that gets a little sketchy when you talk about those guys if you haven't seen the list. Um, so if you see me doing that, that's probably what's on my mind. Yeah, I gotta, gotta talk about some of these things so they don't just float away and nobody ever hears them, you know. All right, everybody, have a good Sunday. I am going to get back to all this stuff. I don't, I'm kind of procrastinating right now. I don't want to go pull weeds. I don't want to go find hats. I'd rather research more, do some more videos. But I've got to do that stuff that, that uh, I need to do. So I hope you all have a good day. Sorry it took me so long to update this video or update uh, everybody with my court progress. Uh, March 25th is my court date, my next court date. And I'm... Well, working on a strategy to to show as much as possible in this case. Not just to show that I'm innocent, but to get as much information about organized stalking and harassment and this illegal program that's going to be uncovered very, very soon. I'm going to get as much of that as possible into this permanent record. So no matter what happens, it's always there. And Anyone can call me crazy now for as long as they want. And then when this, and when this information comes out and I'm proven right, then there, you know, that it, it might be too late for me now. Like I said, who knows, but I will be proven right along with all the other hundreds of thousands, not more targeted individuals that are saying this is going on and, uh, somebody's going to pay for this. Um, I'm really hoping that's what all the indictments are for. The streets would look amazing again. You know what? Come to think of it, here's the last note. My neighborhood, which for months and months on end would be ridiculously noisy. Cars driving by out front every 30 seconds. The trash truck driving by. People knocking on the door. The Phone ringing, jets flying over, helicopters flying over, lawnmowers starting up uh, at the second that you go outside, weed whackers, uh, car alarms, diesel trucks idling, people burning out, fireworks going off, gunshots, kids screaming, all at perfect times, has ceased. Perfectly quiet around here, like the last couple weeks. I mean, the normal air traffic, normal noises in the neighborhood. Oh, all of it. Done. Like, noise campaign, gone. It's been amazing. Uh, the vehicular stalking is still going on. The... Uh, yeah, the, the auto mobbing, the the, go, the the stores, the direct conversation going into the stores, people, you know, meeting me at the front door, aiming their camera right at me. You know, they're on their they're on their phone, and they're like cocked weirdly sideways, and their phone just happens to be aiming at me. And as I go in, it just pans with me perfectly. You know, in the hundredth time that that happens, you start to go, you know what? This is starting to be kind of a repetition. So. It's still going on. Um, but the noise campaign around this house has completely stopped. So what happened? Did every did did commerce slow down around here? Did uh did people just decide to settle down around here? Um, did traffic just kinda settle down? It doesn't make sense because this place uh this gains about a million people during this time of year. The snowbirds, they all come in from Canada from all over the place where it's cold. They come in from different states in the United States. They come to Phoenix or around Phoenix um, and live here. So there's about a million more people in this town during this time. So how has 
all of the commotion and chaos settled down here in the last couple weeks. Almost seems, I don't know, maybe like some funding got pulled, maybe somebody got found out, who knows? Anybody else, else having that same situation? Or are you still getting all the nonsense, chaos around your house? Let me know. All right, I got to get to work. I got to go. I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I should not cough right into the microphone. It's probably really loud. Um, yeah, I got to go. Check out bardin.us, B-A-R-R-E-D-I-N.us. Um, check out my YouTube channel, The Bardin Report. Please subscribe to that. Uh, my other YouTube channel that this is going to be on. <laughs> Please subscribe to that if you haven't. What else am I missing? Uh, Patreon. Michael Barden at Patreon. I've gained a few new Patreons lately. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. I'm just at, yeah, I'm to the point where I'm just at, I'm not going to be ashamed to ask for money. If somebody wants to send some money to help me through this, it would be greatly appreciated. I've spent a ton. I'm running out. I bought some of this stuff with some of the money that uh, people had sent me on uh, Patreon. Uh, got a couple people had sent through just straight through PayPal, um, through the money I've made through my YouTube channel, uh, which isn't a lot, um, but I put it back into this. So I will keep doing that if I keep receiving, uh, I don't want to call them donations. This is just uh, people paying for journalism that will help their cause, you know crowdsourcing. I'm, it's Jason Goodman has the greatest idea. Crowdsource the truth. Everybody pitch in to what they want to see investigated, what they want help with, issues that they're passionate about. Ch chip into what you, you know, what you want. Don't watch uh, commercials all day on cable. Uh, learn something. You know, I'll do my best to teach something, you know, through my experiences and through what I research and what I find out, you know, can help. And there's a lot of information coming out right now, by the way. There's a lot of, and I say mainstream information because you can't even listen to CNN or you know, half of these news uh, network news channels. You have to listen to uh, independent journalists. And a lot of these independent journalists are professional shows that have good information, good research. Uh, there's a lot of information coming about that, uh, about this whole situation I'm talking about, targeting program. Uh, Q post the other day literally talked about remote neural monitoring and something about um, living in a movie is this real you know and if you you've been targeted for any amount of time you understand it's like you're living in the Truman Show and I really believe they were referring to that because they were referring to the remote neural monitoring at the same time and a couple other things uh, that's a really recent Q post check that out uh, that has specifically to do with targeted individuals. I will post that on my Twitter page, actually. I don't know how many times I said I'm done, I gotta go to work, uh, but it might have been a record just now, so I'm gonna go. Everybody have a good day.